mercantilism. Now, mercantilism is, to define it, it's basically the idea that the government should put restrictions on the economy in a country in order to produce maximum wealth for that country. So the government should create some restrictions on the economy in order to maximize wealth. Government restrictions in order to maximize wealth. Now initially the goal of mercantilism is to encourage the accumulation of bullion. Bullion is, you know, precious metals, gold and silver. And so you get bullion by not just discovering it in mines, but also by having a favorable balance of trade. And note that favorable balance of trade is misleading because it's not a balance. A favorable balance means you're exporting more than you're importing. Okay, a favorable balance means you're exporting more than you're importing. Why? Well, just think about what that means. If you're exporting things, then you're selling things to other people, and then you're making money from them. If you're importing things, then you're taking things from other people, and you're giving them money. Now, all the coins have precious metals in them. So if you're selling a lot of things to other countries, then you're going to be getting their coins, and their coins are bullion. Right? Their coins encourage have precious metals. And the more coins you get, the more precious metals you have in your country, in your economy, floating around, and therefore the more prosperous and wealthy your country will be. But as mercantilism continues, the point does not just mean the accumulation of bullion. The goal will be to have maximum economic productivity. Maximum economic productivity. Trying to put people to work. And if you have this, then you'll generate the most money. So more, pe more people working e effectively, efficiently, means you'll be generating a more money. Okay, now mercantilists have a negative attitude towards the guilds and the restrictions that those guilds have. So often they'll try to go around the guilds or they will try to end the restrictions of guilds. Mercantilists will want to reduce or remove domestic tariffs. A domestic tariff is a fee for moving goods within a country domestically. And so they'll want to remove those fees for moving goods through an area in order to encourage more trade. More trade means more production of items, more profits being made. Trade is good, according to the mercantilists. So Colbert, for example, who is the finance minister for Louis XIV, he will uh, be creating a free trade zone in France known as the Five Great Farms. And this is a large free trade zone, the largest free trade zone on continental Europe. Britain will create a free trade zone around in, in England. Okay? And so this will be a large free trade zone in England. Now, whereas domestic tariffs are ended, foreign tariffs are good. Ended, these domestic tariffs are ended or reduced, right? Or that's the idea. Whereas foreign tariffs are good. And why do you want foreign tariffs? You want foreign tariffs to protect your domestic industries, to protect the industries within your country. So you want foreign tariffs, and a tariff, once again, a foreign tariff is a tax on a foreign good. And so you want those because you want to protect the things that are produced within your country and you want to encourage people to buy the things that are produced within your country because you don't want them importing things from other areas. And if you want an example of this, just think about, uh, you know, how can we get people to buy more Chryslers and Chevys? Well, if we put a $5,000 tariff on Hondas and Toyotas and Japanese and Korean and German vehicles, then people would be much more likely to buy the American ones every time. So that's a foreign tariff. And therefore, mercantilists, because they want people to buy domestically and not import things from abroad, encourage those tariffs. Finally, mercantilists will want to create colonies. 
And they'll want to create colonies because they don't want to be importing items from other countries. So they can import raw materials from these colonies. So colonies will be a source of raw materials that will then go to the mother country. The mother country will then turn those raw materials, a hive of activity in the mother country, all these people industrious, industriously working, will then turn those raw materials into finished goods, and those finished goods you can sell and make profits, and therefore you're you know, making more money. Colonies will be a source then of all sorts of raw materials, raw materials like timber, Raw materials like furs that will be turned into nice uh, outfits and things. Raw materials like uh, whaling, the whaling industry will be a source of, of oil and other things used in soap and uh, burning candles and, and things like that. Raw materials like sugar that will be used in molasses and in other items obviously all across Europe. Raw materials like spices, and eventually raw materials like cotton, which will of course play a huge role in the Industrial Revolution. <laughs>